we are going gooey today on Weekend at the Cottage. Welcome to Weekend at the Cottage. I'm Nick Manoilovich. Today, uh, something so absolutely scrumptious. You are going to love this. Um, I'm doing my friend Julie Van Rosendahl's recipe for the ultimate gooey cinnamon buns. Honestly, just wait. You're going to want to reference the full story plus photos and tips at weekendatthecottage.com. Same goes for this video. At the end of this, please subscribe to Weekend at the Cottage on YouTube. And then finally, snap a photo of these cinnamon buns. When you make them, you're going to want to take a picture, trust me. And then post them on your favorite social media platforms like Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Do us a favor, just use hashtag Weekend at the Cottage and hashtag dinner with Julie when you post these photos. Now Julie is no stranger to delicious food. Uh, she's the host of dinnerwithjulie.com. You can visit her website. She's also the author of a really wonderful cookbook called Dirty Food. Um, and she and I have hung out together. We've presented classes together. Um, but I got to say this one recipe is just so fantastic. It's kind of all about Julie. She just always does scrumptious food. Now to make these cinnamon buns we're going to start by creating a yeast dough. Although I could have shown you the first part of this recipe in the bowl of a stand mixer, I wanted to do it in a glass bowl so you can see the process. We're going to start by prepping our yeast. I'm placing half a cup of warm water into the bowl, add a pinch of sugar, stir to dissolve, then one tablespoon of dry active yeast. Sprinkle the yeast on top, stick your finger in there, give it a stir, and now this needs to sit for five minutes. If you've never made a yeast dough before, we're looking for the yeast to foam up. Uh, and the other thing I'd like you to do is just do a whiff of the great fragrance that comes off of yeast when you work with it. It's really, really wonderful. Now after that five minutes, we're continuing to build our dough. I'm adding one cup of scalded milk. It's quite warm, so I add the milk in, add half a cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of kosher salt. I place a spoon in there, start to dissolve those ingredients. And now the first of three appearances of butter in this recipe, half a cup of butter, kind of stir it around. Those liquids are warm, so the butter is going to melt. Right when the butter is melted, we're gonna take two eggs into a bowl, whisk them up, they go into the bowl. Julie's calling for five cups of flour, so we're gonna add about two or three right now, stir the flour in, and then we're back into the bowl of the stand mixer. Our stand mixer, I'm using a dough hook lock, and then we're processing on medium. Uh, the dough starts to come together, and now you need to add, just gently, the remaining balance of that five cups of flour. When everything is incorporated, your dough will look quite shaggy, a little rough around the edges, it's okay. Over to a floured surface, turn it out, and you're gonna knead it for about five minutes. Uh, this little counter moves, so I always kind of grab on and just uh, use the palm of my hand to push that dough, knead it for five to eight minutes, and then it goes into a bowl, clean dish towel, and we're placing it into a warm location. It needs to rise for one hour, it'll double in size. After that hour, your dough will have risen, and now we need to do two things. Um, I'm gonna take a small saucepan, and we're gonna create something that Julie calls the goo. So into that saucepan, one cup packed dark brown sugar. I told you, another half cup of butter. A quarter cup of water. And then last ingredient, no surprise, our beloved Julie gives us options. She's so amazing. You can do a third of a cup of Rogers Golden Syrup, or you can do corn syrup, or you can do, as we did today, a third of a cup of honey. Take a little silicone spatula, place all those ingredients in. We're gonna bring the saucepan over to the stove top, medium heat, and we're just gonna melt those ingredients. Keep stirring until the butter is completely melted and then bring it over to your work surface. Now you've gotta make some decisions. You can do one large rectangle of these cinnamon buns. You could do maybe a square. You could do two pie plates. Um, one thing to remember, you're gonna be inverting these cinnamon buns at the end. So you could do what I did, uh, which was to pick my service piece first. I have this beautiful oval and then I was partnering it with an oval over a tan um, pan to make my cinnamon buns. I also did an additional 
a set of buns in a pie plate, which is great. So select one or two baking pans. We're gonna take that goo and you're gonna add it into the bottom of the pan. The goo just naturally fills out the pan. The last thing in this step is to add an optional ingredient, uh, pecan halves. I suggest you do add them. They're fantastic in this recipe. Taking pecan halves, I kind of turn them or invert them into the goo. Again, remembering we'll be inverting the whole dish. Um, and then I had a bunch of pecan bits left over like I didn't want to put broken pecan bits so I saved them to the side I'll talk about that in a moment now just slide those gooed up pecan festooned pans to one side it's time to work our dough we're going to lightly flour our uh, work surface and then turn your dough out onto the surface cut it in half return one half to the bowl just for a moment that first half with a rolling pin we're going to roll it out to a rectangular shape Guess what's coming next? Butter. This time a quarter cup of butter melted with a pastry brush. We're just going to brush the top of that rectangle. Next step is so sweet. I'm grabbing a handful of dark brown sugar and then just sprinkling it over the top of the butter dough. We're taking a small little tiny strainer, cinnamon, about one teaspoon, and just dust the top of the dough with cinnamon. And then my twist on this recipe, but I think Julie will approve. Remember those broken pecan bits? Well, I chopped them up and now I'm sprinkling pecan across the top of the dough. Head to the bottom of the dough closest to you and now we're gonna roll it up like a log. Just roll the dough up, not too tight, just roll it up. Julie is suggesting we divide this rolled log into three. So cut it first into thirds and then take each third and cut it again into three. So you're left with nine pieces of this spiraled rolled cinnamon bun dough. We're gonna bring our pan back to the work surface and now you're going to invert those spirals, soon to be cinnamon buns, into that goo. And I gotta tell you, at this point, you just know where this recipe is going and it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I then put the pan back this way. I still have another round of dough. Roll up the rectangle. We butter it. We're gonna sprinkle it again with brown sugar. How about a dusting of cinnamon? And do the Nick version and add that chopped uh, round of pecan to the top and then roll it up, slice, and then you're going to fill either your second pan or the first pan. Now you have to wait for a little bit. We're gonna cover our cinnamon buns with a clean dish towel. They go to a warm location. They need to sit for one hour. They're gonna puff up and get all ready for the oven. You can see when I took off my dish towel, they're just ready to go. Our oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Very important. Julie is saying we need to put a baking sheet underneath the rack that the cinnamon buns are going on. There may be bubbling over. I had bubble over. Uh, so place that baking sheet into your oven and then on the rack above, we're placing our tray of cinnamon buns. 30 minutes should do the trick. At that 30 minute mark, there's gonna be lots of bubbles happening in your pan. Uh, the cinnamon buns have come up nicely. There's a gorgeous golden dome uh, on the top. You're gonna to bring them out of the oven uh, and they're gorgeous. Like look at how beautiful they are. You're ready to dig in, but remember we need to invert the dish. So grab a service piece, oven mitts. It needs to be quick and careful. We're going to invert. <laughs> and then you can tap and the, the pans come away really easily, revealing some very serious and delicious gooey Goodness, I hope I've inspired you to try Julie's ultimate gooey cinnamon buns. They really are remarkable. Uh, what's the final verdict you ask? Well, I could take a fork, but I could also do it with my fingers. They are extremely delicious, very tasty. Mm. Pecan-y, cinnamon-y, sweet, <laughs> and gooey. <laughs> the best, enjoy. Until next time, we'll see you again. Mm. Oh my gosh, amazing.